Many thanks to Jerb, Jaren, DC Podcast, Taggy's Tag West, That One Random, and Great Poncho for making this video possible. Contamination zones are one of the most epic features that has ever been added to Daisy in the history of Daisy patches, generating high risk, high loot reward challenges that were brutally under existence should you ignore the potent cruelty of this bleak, green, unsuspecting vapor, violating the very life force of the uninitiated in the art of chemical warfare that the Daisy devs have placed overhead. So in this video, I'm gonna aid you in mustering the clarity to bring about a sharp end to the new dangers that we all face. Starting with the basics, there are four contamination zones in Daisy. On the Chernoros map, that's Riffy, where this big ship is, and Pavlovo military base. Where on the Livonia map, these static gas zones are Radanen and Gliniska airfield. Note the keyword static here. It means they never move and they never disappear. These four are on the map at all times and will house some of the rarest loot in the game, such as the M4, metal suppressors, night vision optics, high capacity magazines, and the like. Basically, the good stuff. Because going into these zones is very high risk, even with the correct Gear, you're in constant danger. The biggest danger, however, is the random artillery strikes that will blanket a town in the same green poison that's found in these static locations, covering entire areas in fog, which has the potential to give you the most deadly disease in Daisy in just 25 seconds of exposure, gas poisoning, which can lead to an even more devastating disease, which I call the Black Plague, which basically gives you gas poisoning just on steroids. I'm calling it the Black Plague because all you will see is black as it instantly makes you unconscious when you get it, and for the next 30 seconds, you're your health will drain from full to zero. This is without question the deadliest status effect that's currently in the game, but we will cover that later. For now, let's talk about how you're going to avoid getting hit by one of these random artillery strikes. Here are all the locations where these artillery events can occur. Each one of these green dots can shower a world of pain on you, which is a lot of locations that I'm not expecting anybody to remember, and these could change over time. At any one time, there could be up to five of these contamination zones on the map, with one of them taking place roughly every 15 minutes. But before you get gassed, you will get some warning. First, you'll hear the distant rumble of artillery which comes from the edge of the map. Second, you hear silence. You gain confidence that this random sound didn't mean anything at all. Third, 45 seconds after the initial rumble of artillery, the scream of a shell dropping overhead explodes, forming a toxic cloud that slowly settles over the course of 15 seconds. And finally, fourth, unless you have protection, you have 25 seconds to get out of town before you get a deadly disease that will probably kill you. So from the time you hear the rumble to the time the gas starts killing your character, you have one minute. And from the time you hear the rumble to the time where you probably will die, you have one minute and 25 seconds. So you have one minute and 25 seconds to get out of town. Now there have been reports that a flare appears overhead to warn that there's going to be an artillery strike about 15 seconds before you hear the rumble. But other than that, if you hear this sound, get out of the town you're in unless you have the equipment necessary to survive the gas, which, let's be honest, most people won't. If you do have protection and decide to stay, all of the infected around you will quickly die from the gas and new infected will rise in their place. This is a new hazmat variant of infected and it's immune to the gases and has the same stats as the soldier infected type, 115 health and capable of inflicting 15 shock damage per hit. They spawn in groups, so getting overwhelmed is very easy and you will die if you do. If they ruin any part of your hazmat suit, you will probably die from gas poisoning and if your filter runs out, you will probably die too. Unfortunately, you can't loot an entire hazmat suit from one of these dead infected, but they do spawn parts that may help you. What doesn't spawn though is high tier loot in the areas that get hit by this random artillery, at least not yet, meaning there's no real reason to stay in the area that becomes temporarily contaminated. It's very dangerous and there's very little reward. If you go into a gas area and you are unprotected, you will instantly get a bleed as you enter the area and start to cough. And every 15 seconds, a new bleed will start, which doesn't appear to have a limit. So that means these bleeds will happen every 15 seconds, no matter what happens. Not that this matters because just one minute and 20 seconds after entering the gas, you will vomit blood and then go unconscious, starting what I referred to earlier as the Black Plague death in 30 seconds. 
This whole process contains three levels of the disease called gas poisoning. <laughs> Level one gas poisoning, you get a bleed and an invisible contamination leveling bar starts increasing. If this bar doesn't fill up and you leave the area with just one or two bleeds, you won't get gas poisoning level two. However, if you decide to stay in the gas for 25 seconds or more while unprotected, you will start level two gas poisoning, which will display this sickness icon on your character window and will begin to drain blood from you. If you are going to bandage, make sure you do it with disinfected rags to avoid getting wound infection too because that would be a major bummer here. Which will be the least of your worries actually, level 2 gas poisoning is pretty much death. If you manage to escape with level 2 gas poisoning, every 50 seconds you will cough and this cough removes 50 blood from you as the cough happens. And every time you cough too, you will cough up blood onto your hands as you're coughing giving you the bloody hand status effect too. Lovely. Even though this is your own blood, you can still get salmonella from it if you eat or drink with bloody hands. Making gloves or multivitamins very valuable if you are being ravaged by level 2 gas poisoning. And ravaged you will be because every 250 seconds you will vomit your own blood up, likely from the gas you swallowed while coughing. I have no idea, I'm not a real scientist. So if we simplify this, gas poisoning level 2, you cough every 50 seconds, you get bloody hands every 50 seconds, and you vomit blood every 250 seconds. Basically, using some maths, you lose 2 blood per second until you die because like wound infection, this disease lasts a very long time. Even from full blood, that is certain death in 20 minutes without any regeneration, with being in and out of consciousness for the last 4 minutes or so, which is great fun. The only way to maintain your blood level with this disease is saline bags or someone donating blood to you, but because I went 2 hours of injecting myself with salines, it's probably better just to... yeah. But that's not the worst of it because there is level 3 gas poisoning which takes around 1 minute to go from level 2 <laughs> to level 3 if you're inside gas or around 1 minute and 20 seconds after entering a gas field. Level 3 gas poisoning is what I referred to earlier as the black plague. As soon as you enter this level you will go unconscious and lose free health every second along with the blood loss that you stacked from the bleeds and the coughing and the vomiting of blood. The Black Plague is death in around 30 seconds. Oh. Even if you have admin powers, you can manipulate your stats all you want, but your stats will return to the way they are. Even admin powers can't fight the Black Plague. But there is hope. A newly added injector called Pox was added to the game in this patch too, which will instantly cure level 2 gas poisoning in mere seconds. If you're outside the gas field and you inject this into yourself, you will survive. In addition, it will completely nullify the Black Plague, waking you up instantly and giving you a chance to escape the gas. However, Pox will not give you immunity to the gas for any period of time. It will simply reset the gas poisoning level that I was talking about earlier and start you back at the start of level 1, where you can enjoy the near-death experience once again. So Pox is a very useful item because it appears to be the only way to survive level 2 or higher gas poisoning. And in addition, it also instantly revives unconscious players. Even if they don't have gas poisoning, you can use it on them, giving group play more dynamics with the ability to instantly revive unconscious teammates, unless you don't like your teammates very much. Just like in real life, to survive a deadly illness, all you need is a thin piece of cloth covering your chin and you will be perfectly fine. If that doesn't work for some reason, you will need to find one of these free gas masks and the entirety of an NBC hazmat suit, which comes in yellow or grey. Which gas mask you choose for the gas zones doesn't make a difference, but maintaining the NBC mask and the nightmare fuel mask is your best bet because the filters are detachable and universal between these two. All of the gas mask filters would decay at the same rate, 1% every 50 seconds while outside of a contamination zone. However, if you go into a contamination zone, a gas mask will drain at 1% every 5 seconds, so 10 times faster. So a gas filter will last 1 hour and 20 minutes outside of a contamination zone and inside just 8 minutes from 100%. And like I said earlier, all gas masks will drain at the same rate. Note that if you wear a gas mask outside a contamination zone, not only are you wasting the filter because it only drains when you wear it, but your stamina will regen at 2.5 times slower with the gas mask on and all actions that require stamina will cost 20% more stamina. So they actually negatively impact you when outside of a contamination zone unless you want to get the heat benefits of wearing one and you don't care about the harsh stamina penalties. Anyway, if you go into a gas area with just a mask and no protection, you will still get the bleed every 15 seconds like before, but you won't get gas poisoning level 1, 2 or 3 as quickly as going without one. 
This means you can still very much die in a gory fashion with a fully working gas mask on, only delaying you getting the disease by about 30 seconds. In order to fully protect yourself, you will need a full NBC suit which consists of these five parts. All of these five pieces must not be ruined, but using badly damaged pieces is perfectly fine. Just be aware that your NBC boots can become ruined if you wear and tear them through movement. If you need to repair your NBC suit, you can do so up to the worn quality level with the tire repair kit, or you can repair the gas masks with the epoxy putty. And no, repairing the combat gas mask will not restore the filter in any way, and both the gas mask and the NBC suit can be repaired with duct tape. However, there is no way to repair the filter for gas masks, and there is no way to refill this filter either. When inside the gas, even a badly damaged suit will fully protect you like a pristine one, but not having a gas mask will give you the disease steal, and not having just one of the five pieces of NBC gear can kill you too. If fully protected, like I said, your gas filter will become empty from full in about 8 minutes, but thankfully you do get some warning when it will deplete. At 20% your character will start breathing heavier than usual and you should notice this different. At this point you will have 1 minute and a half to escape the gas or change the filter. At 10%, gasping will start, giving you 50 seconds until depletion. At 5%, you will begin coughing, but you can't catch gas poisoning below 5%. It has to be completely zero. At this point, you have around 25 seconds to get out of the gas or change your filter. If your filter reaches 0%, it will become ruined, and it will be as if you're not wearing a mask at all, giving you level 2 gas poisoning in around 25 seconds. This means you have around 25 seconds to replace your filter before you get to level 2 gas poisoning, which is the level where you get to visit the UR dead screen. To summarize, if you hear this sound and you're inside a town or a military area, it's best to get out, you have 1 minute and 30 seconds to do so, or you risk dying. If you are going into a contamination zone, remember that the only safe place for you is in your mind. You will need a gas mask with a filter, 5 pieces of the NBC suit, and I recommend taking a weapon to fight the stronger than usual infected, as well as bandages and a pox injector. That's a lot of stuff to go inside these zones. Remembering all the while that the pox injector can only reset your gas poisoning level it won't make you immune to the gas but it will buy you more time inside the gas areas. Now there is a lot to talk about when it comes to this mechanic including how building bases in towns is going to be much more difficult now with the constant gas attacks happening and a mechanics as game changing as random contamination zone artillery strikes. Your feedback is going to be more powerful than usual so get into the comments and let's make this feature the best it possibly can be for everyone. I got a huge amount of questions about how this new mechanic works so I'm going to be doing a dedicated video for answering questions which I'm still taking questions for, so let me know what you want to know about gas zones in the comments. I want to give a special thanks to Glaz, who is the guy that was lucky or unlucky enough to get an artillery strike dropped on him at BMC, link below. Additionally, I want to thank everybody that let me use their clips for this video, and everyone else that gave me information on how this mechanic works, you guys are incredible. Once again, the Daisy community came together to overcome a new challenge, and the beauty of this community continues to shine brightly. In particular, this time, the tight console community that provided much of the random artillery strike clips. Console players deserve much more love than they get from this community. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.